Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of Zoom at any time during the presentation, or you can ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Roland Kiesling. Roland is a professor of African linguistics at the University of Hamburg. He specializes in documentation and analysis of African languages with specific interest in phonetic transcription, morphosemantics, and language change. He has extensive experience in the field, as well as numerous publications to his name, and he has worked on Cushitic, Milotic, Nair Congo, and Khoisan languages. Please join me in welcoming Roda today as he gives his talk, identifying the Togalones in Iraku and the other way around. Roda, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Anne. Um, I hope that you can hear me well, yeah? Uh, so this is a report on a current comparative work on uh, lexical history in the Tanzanian Rift Valley, uh, focusing on, well, transfers, lexical transfers between Datoga and Iraq. And um, the uh, present day contact of Iraq and Datoga has a longer history, of course, which goes back to pre-colonial times. This contact is reflected in the intertwining, for example, of descent groups with Iraq clans with a Datoga origin, and it's reflected in shared cultural practices and in lexical transfers, which must have gone both ways, affecting various semantic domains, for example, subsistence vocabulary as treated by Rotland and Maus, 2001. But uh, there is much more to find as the database uh, expands, especially with regard to the coverage of Datoga now. So what I want to do here is to widen the scope beyond subsistence vocabulary and present some new findings, fishing for your views, of course, and your suggestions uh, and um, there will also be a discussion on methodological issues concerning the determination of the direction of uh, borrowings. Okay, this table uh, shows the types of phonological correspondence patterns in Datoga Iraq cognates, which would be crucial for determining the direction of transfer since they can be interpreted as phonological replacements applied to source phonemes in the course of adaptation. Now, in order to grasp this, we will look into some of the examples in uh, phonology here. Uh, palatal phonemes such as ch, j, sh, and ny, uh, clearly point to a uh, Datoga etymology, while pharyngeals such as ha and a and ejectives tla and tla point, of course, to an Iraq etymology of items. Uh, open mid vowels -vowel, such as e and o um, point to Datoga etymology, as does the velar nasal, n, which would be replaced by ng in uh, Iraq. The presence of a uvula plosive ka, uh, has uh, some limited diagnostic value here because it is part of both phonological systems, Iraq and Datoga. However, if we encounter a correspondence of Datoga ka, with Iraq kh, as for example in the Iraq word khawi, mourning or avoidance due to death, uh, versus uh, the Datoga um, equivalent or corresponding item Kawida. Uh, this is this rather clearly suggests the direction of transfer from Iraq to Datoga, since there would be no motivation to replace uh, Ka with Kh in Iraq if it was the other way around. Also, the elision of the post-consonantal glottal stop in Datoga. Kawida from Iraq, Kawi, would point to an Iraq origin in this specific case. In morphology, 
the nominal suffix clusters, eda, oda, ega, oga, iga, and and uh, are clear indicators of Datoga etymology. In Datoga, these clusters are composed of two morphemes. That is a terminal specifier da for the singular or ga for the plural. And there's a larger set of preceding suffixes with number marking functions, which also vary in tone, e, e, o, o, and so on and uh, various uh, others which I have not yet encountered in Iraq loans. Uh, they tend to undergo various types of erosion or reduction in Iraq. Uh, usually the terminal vowel is lost and the plosive is devoiced to T or K as in Iraq or Yok folks from Datoga or Dioga brothers and uh, in Iraq Sarod or Sharod from the Toga Sherod, a leather bag for collecting honey. Both consonants T and K are also frequently dropped to the effect that eventually long vowels, long final vowels, A or O, betray the Toga origin as for example in Iraq Emet or Emi people from the Datoga word emeda. Sometimes these vowels are accompanied by a high tone, as in gendarian, baobab, which is derived from the Datoga word gendarian. Although this high tone uh, does not always seem to be faithful to the source. A less frequently encountered evidence is the retention of verbal extensions, but I won't go into this now. The morphological indicators uh, here are heavy to the Datoga side presently, and they are not 100% reliable for two reasons. First of all, Datoga suffix material tends to be eroded for, uh, to various extents as uh, seen in Eda re, um, reduced to eight or a e, and ega to ek and and e. Um, this is one uh, issue. The other one is that uh, Datoga sourced items in Iraq can also undergo morphological Iraquization. Uh, that is adaptation to Iraq morphological structures to different degrees. The Iraq name for the leopard in the poetic register of songs, Marirai, uh, is derived from its profane equivalent, Marirda, leopard, in Datoga, but uh, the root was Iraquized by addition of the nominal suffix I, replacing the Datoga singular specifying suffix da. And in the Iraq noun Qedi, a small type of house, the Datoga source noun Qeda uh, has been Iraquized by addition of a feminine singular suffix E on top of the Datoga singular specifier Da. And then um, another example, Iraq Guarendamo, young male donkey is uh, borrowed from Datoga Gurenda. Uh, here, the Datoga singular specifier da has been retained and even supplemented by the Iraq masculine singulative suffix mo to give guarenda mo then. But there's also something else going on. It seems as if some Datoga loans in Iraq are remodeled by applying the Datoga source marker T. The Iraq name Marguet uh, clearly derives from the Datoga noun Marguega, beer, uh, which does not fit for the final consonant, though, since the Datoga noun is plural only with no corresponding singular for Margueda to account for the final T in the Iraq name. The Iraq name has obviously become remodeled by analogy to other Datoga loans by installation of a, of a non-etymological or fake T here. 
And this seems to be a recurrent pattern also attested in the Iraq word for beard, which is damud or damu with a loss of the T then, uh, which clearly derives from the Datoga demuka beard, yet there is no corresponding singular demoda with a um, D consonant in the end in, in Datoga, singulatives rather being demuyenda or damuyanda. Um, external uh, distribution in southern Cushitic versus Southern Nilotic is, of course, another diagnostic yardstick. So the Iraq word gibesmo, upper or front part of the leg, is most probably an adaptation of Datoga gibest uh, thigh, because there is a Southern Nilotic etymology to the noun, as uh, um, evidenced by Protocalangian coupes. The same holds for Iraq Sorondai, goat or sheep droppings from Datoga Siron Jog, uh, by virtue of a Kalenjin um, reconstruction, which is present here. And of course, there's additional phonological support for this. In the case of uh, Datoga Mureda, respect or honor, and La Quendeda, basket, it could be argued that. Both go back to the to Iraq sources, Mure and Laquanti, due to uh, robust uh, Proto-West Rift etymologies. Um, internal variation across Datoga dialects can also be diagnostic. So the Datoga item Hagu, maize, might be an adaptation of Iraq, Ago, food which is supported by its restriction to the East Datoga dialects, Gisamjanga and Barbayiga, that is those which seem to have had particular close and prolonged interaction with Iraq. Uh, and uh, it is absent uh, in, uh, from West Datoga, Western Datoga. Now in the following, I will present some findings broadly arranged according to semantic domains, uh, that is livestock terminology, personal names, uh, place names, some items for material culture, spiritual culture, and uh, the Toga avoidance register, the Iraq poetic register, and some uh, Iraq terms with assumed Datoga etymology, but without any proof so far, and some problematic items will be discussed in the end. Well, um, Iraq must have expanded its livestock terminology by incorporation of items from Datoga source, and that has been reported by Rotland and Mouse, so this is nothing new. Uh, the items relate to cattle code terminology, to cattle names, and to specific designations for small stock, for disease, and for body parts. So for example, Iraq Kwaraida he goat is borrowed from the Datoga Kwaraida uh, due to morphological evidence, the retention of the singular specifier da. And some of the items in uh, this table are also uh, shared by Gorwa, as in the case of uh, Sony, probably barren animal, and Sonari, wombless cow. So the transfer in these cases is likely to have occurred as early as the um, proto iraquoid phase before Iraq and Gorwa actually split. Some of the cattle, uh, no, some of the Iraqo cattle code terms for which a Datoga origin had been assumed in Rotland and Maus can now be confirmed to be definitely of Datoga origin based on morphological and semantic grounds. So for example, Iraq Mara, white-faced uh, for cows is derived from uh, Datoga Mer, a cow with a white head and a body uh, with a, in a different color. Uh, this term also derives a cattle name in Datoga, Mera, 
and the root mer in Datoga has a much wider meaning, which has has to do with shining and gleaming. It also means having a bald head and is attested in the Datoga name for Mount Kilimanjaro, for example, Eskijeda Mer, the glittering mountain. The, the other two, um, Moor and Om, for different shades of brown and yellow, are morphologically anchored in Datoga by way of very restricted and less productive plural morphology here, which rather points to their origin or in Datoga. Contrary to Iraq, all, th all three of these terms are not restricted to cattle code semantics in Datoga, but they rather refer to more general color concepts. And quite a number of Iraq cattle names originate in Datoga nouns. Uh, for example, Iraq Nawet, a cow born on the road, is from uh, the Datoga noun Naweda, path or road, and Digeet, cow bought with a donkey from Datoga Digeet, and Lagi, a cow acquired in war, probably from Datoga Lugoda, a troop of warriors. It seems that none of these terms are actually used for cattle naming in Datoga, though. Um, in material culture, Iraq terms with the Datoga etymology seem to cluster in the domain of containers, dressing, and jewelry. Iraq terms for two types of leather bags, uh, that is uh, Sharod or Sarod and Maishod are borrowed from Datoga Sherod and Mushot respectively. And Iraq uh, Sakan earrings is from uh, Datoga Sankand, a copper spiral earring, as are other terms for jewelry and decorum. Uh, which are mentioned or which are listed here, but I uh, won't go through these uh, details now. Um, and there's also a considerable number of terms transferred in the opposite direction, that is from Iraq to Datoga, various terms for tools and implements, such as uh, the item La Quande, the basket that we had already seen, and Guahida, flat shovel for removing dung, haftida, mat, behida, plank, and dumbida, strainer. They are all borrowed from Iraq, Laquanti, Quaha, uh, Hafta, Pehi, and Dumbi, respectively, as uh, supported by phonological and morphological evidence. Mm. It is striking to see that there must have been intense exchange of cultural concepts around disease, pollution, contamination, uh, protection and precaution between Iraq and Datoga. The most prominent concept is probably Iraq Meta, quarantine caused by pollution, uh, together with Khawi, the mourning uh, avoidance, both of which have been borrowed to Datoga as Metida and Qawida, respectively. Apart from morphological evidence, it is also the distribution among Datoga, which confirms that the borrowing must have been from Iraq, since both Datoga terms seem to be restricted to Gisamjanga and Barabaiga. Uh, those which have been in close, closer or closest contact to the Iraq. Moreover, both terms are uh, embedded in Iraq derivational networks with cognate verbs such as metim, avoid for fear of contamination, and khawa, uh, to be in mourning avoidance. It also goes in the other direction from Datoga to Iraq, though, as in the case of Iringet, uh, which means a serious crime, which is adapted from uh, Datoga Ringeda, sin or crime. Iraq names with a Datoga origin 
um, have been attested. For example, Awet, which is from the Datoga name Ewed, uh, which is derived from the Datoga ordinary noun Ewed, night. And Baran, the Iraq name Baran, is from the Datoga name Barend, uh, which is from the Datoga noun Barend, travel companions. Okay, while all these names definitely derive from Datoga, not all of them also have name equivalents in Datoga. So the coinage of a name seems to have taken place in Iraq entirely without any Datoga name model, uh, which uh, is also attested. Sometimes, uh, names uh, seem to undergo considerable uh, reductions and distortions. For example, in the personal name uh, for males in the Iraqi name Barhe, which is from Barye or Baryet, uh, which is from Datoga Berdieda, uh, which is sourced from the Datoga noun Berdieda and which means fight or conflict. And there are also Datoga names with Iraq origin, uh, such as uh, Guashem uh, from Iraq, uh, Kwashem, and uh, Hayuma from Iraq, Hayuma. But these seem to be much fewer than the Iraq names with Datoga source. Okay, uh, next will be place names, Datoga speaking groups were once more dominant in large areas of the Rift Valley in regions which have now been settled by Iraq, Gorwa and Bantu populations. And this is clearly reflected in place names across the Tanzanian Rift Valley, also found in places where there is no Datoga presence today any longer and where the original Datoga names have become uh, bastardized or, and superseded by Iraq, Bantu and Swahili names, a process which uh, should urgently be documented before etymologies cannot be retraced any longer. The collection in uh, the table here is quite random. So the Iraq name for Haidom uh, derives from Haidom, bull of a light brownish color and the Datoga etymology of Iraq, uh, Katesh, is uh, in Datoga Qaytish, derived from the Datoga word Qayta, neck or narrow passage, and Ish, which means white or bald, that is without vegetation. So the name refers to a narrow passage without trees. Iraq Endabesh is from Datoga Endabwash, referring to a split river, and Mangola probably originates in Datoga Mwangwala, which means it is not mixed or it is not polluted from the um, verb ngwal to stir. Okay. Iraq words have frequently been integrated into the women's avoidance register uh, on the Toga side, that is in Ginga Wakshoda. So the original Datoga nouns barda, knife, and nyeuda, cat, are replaced by the avoidance terms uh, satai and uh, maisadienda, which have been derived from the Iraqu nouns tsatai and maitsi, respectively. It would be actually, it would be illuminating to check the degree to which Iraq sourced avoidance terms are spread beyond Gisamjanga and Barbaiga, that is to Buradiga, for example. I don't know if there has been, uh, somebody has researched on this. Mm, yes, now uh, as mirror image to the Iraq sourced items in the Datoga avoidance register, the Iraq poetic register in songs and stories draws heavily on Datoga terms, while an Iraq uh, imprint in Datoga in this domain is much less obvious. 
So names of prominent animals such as Habie, na the name of the hyena in songs, Gojonjo, name of the hare, Marire, leopard, Ngadi, the lion, all are borrowed from the corresponding profane Datoga words, Habieda, Gujonjoda, Marirda, and uh, Ngadida, respectively. Transfer is probably due to the fact that some songs have been borrowed directly from Datoga, but it is also caused definitely by some prestige or fascination that Datoga culture must have had on Iraq. Prominent figures in Iraq oral traditions also have a Datoga origin, at least their names have obviously been borrowed, as is the case for Haidarer, a mythical or giant ogre bull appearing in Iraq stories. Uh, and the, the name originates in Datoga Haida Arera, which means red bull. And the Iraq uh, Hararioda, that is a name of a mythical giant snake, is modeled after the Datoga Harardioda, which is also a mythical giant snake in uh, Datoga oral culture. A special case actually is the prominent Iraq story of Latch, a type of uh, cultural hero and human trickster, very prominent in Iraq oral narratives, a uh, character born under magical circumstances. His parents try to get rid of him, but they fail. Uh, the central part of the entire plot is how Latch acquires wealth in a series of several episodes by taking advantage of the supply and demand principle. He approaches people who are in need of some item that he possesses and uh, borrows it to them. Uh, people use the item up or spoil it, and then he challenges them by vigorously demanding that they should recomp recompensate him with some other item of their possession, which is more valuable indeed than the item he had originally borrowed them. So by tricking people into owing him something, he works himself upwards from the possession of leaves to feathers to a needle to a spear to grains and to cattle and he makes a fortune in the end which he will lose again but this is another story the puzzle here is uh, the character is so popular and well known um, all Iraq stories uh, collections contain more or less elaborate versions of this story yet the name of the character Latch has no plausible etymology in Iraq. On the contrary, it contains the unusual Africa ch, which is restricted to loan words in Iraq and not part of the Southern Cushitic heritage. So what could be more obvious than to suspect a Datoga uh, origin here? But um, this also runs us into another problem. There does not seem to be a character latch in Datoga oral literature. Moreover, the plot itself is obviously not part of the Datoga epic matrix. Yet, there is a Datoga explanation to it which I find persuasive. Uh, the name Latch uh, probably reflects an Iraq adaptation of the Datoga formulaic expression Ladja, cut it, which is used as challenge in quarrels. It's an imperative form of the verb laj to cut, accompanied by uh, the gesture of forming a circle by thumb and index finger, saying, cut this circle if you want to challenge me. And this is often performed by socially superior persons who feel um, kind of illegitimately offended by other person, by another person of lower rank with the intention to enregister the challenge officially, openly in front of wit witnesses and to intimidate the uh, opponent. Um, uh, accompanied uh, by this uh, gesture, forming a ring uh, with uh, index and thumb like this, and the opponent is then supposed to break the ring by uh, cutting through um, this uh, the the ring. 
and um, break it. Um, otherwise, he will have to de to withdraw. And this is precisely what the character Latch does in uh, the story. He regularly confronts his debtors with a challenge they don't dare to oppose. So I think this is a, a kind of persuasive uh, explanation for the establishment of the name Latch in uh, in in this um, story or for this plot for the character in this plot. Now, um, irritatingly, there are also uh, quite a number of Iraq items for which a Datoga origin has been claimed and plausibly so, as it is mostly supported by formal evidence. For example, the ending eight, which is a clear indicator. Yet no Datoga source item could be identified so far. And scouring the uh, Iraq dictionary for this brings up all the, the items presented here. And in case anyone of you has a suggestion here, as you run an eye over it, uh, this would be most welcome, of course. Um, furthermore, there are quite a number of Iraq Datoga lexical similarities for which the direction of transfer is hard to establish, either because of lack of evidence uh, or because of conflicting evidence or because of a lack of external att attestations, some probably pointing to an older layer of transfers from a period of contact predating the Iraq and Datoga phase, probably going back to Proto-West Rift times or even beyond. Any suggestions that you might have for these items would, of course, be highly welcome. One item which struck me is Iraq Sakweli ostrich, which is suspiciously similar to Datoga Shageroda ostrich. There is a, neither a sound a southern nilotic nor a proto west drift etymology, but the item is, I think, better motivated on the southern Cushitic side with uh, Iraq idiophone Sak. To walk uh, for walking in, in a jumping fashion. Um, the voice plosive in Datoga would fit the scenario of borrowing from West Rift. However, uh, the liquid R and the initial ESH uh, remain unmotivated. Then there is Datoga Rukus to hurl down, which may be an ancient borrowing from proto west Rift Rakus to hurl a spear. The direction of borrowing is confirmed by the presence of the West Rift causative suffix S. Uh, the initial consonant R suggests that it cannot have been borrowed from Iraq or Gorwa uh, since the those reflexes have initial D in Dukus. However, the quality of the first vowel in the Datoga item rather points to an Iraq or Gorwa or proto iraquoid uh, source in Dukus before the initial R had been transformed to D. Uh, then there is Iraq Much to Spank. And Datoga Muk, which is also Spank, they must be linked, but the direction of borrowing is difficult to establish in the absence of both Southern Cushitic and Southern Nilotic external attestations. With Shave, the Iraq form Deq reconstructs at least to Proto Northwest Rift level, that is the common predecessor of Iraq, Gorwa, and Alagwa. However, the vowel quality in Datoga, Rek, Shave, and the initial consonant are hard to account for uh, in such a scenario. Uh, Mure, yes, Iraq Mure, which is should be on this list, yeah, uh, the, somewhere in the middle. And uh, Datoga Mureda uh, must also be linked somehow. There is a West Rift etymology for Mure. 
However, the morphological evidence is not conclusive. The long vowel E in West Drift might actually reflect the Datoga nominal suffix, uh, the loss of the dental plosive in Datoga, of the Datoga singular specifier in Southern Cushitic loans uh, is also quite common. Then there is the mystery, is it, oh, oh yeah, it's on this list, the mystery of uh, Iraq Goranga, which means a song to get praise with its derivations such as Gorangus to sing for praise and uh, so on. From the cultural background, it is quite clear that the custom of singing self praises in uh, is a Datoga practice expressed by the verbs rangd to sing self praises about one's heroic deeds in order to acquire glory. And um, a burger in 1935 uh, reports that this is actually, a, uh, this is perceived as a Datoga custom taken over by Iraq, uh, taken over from those Datoga who did not join the Datoga exodus to Mashonkoda, that is Nyamwezi, uh, but uh, those who rather stayed with the Iraq, uh, the problem is to explain the initial go in the Iraq form for which I have no solution. And I think, uh, yeah, the toga, uh, as a conclusion or generalization here, the toga have been cultural trendsetters in cattle terminology and in um, yeah, jewelry, for example, while Iraq avoidance practices seem to have radiated to those Datoga groups which have been in closest contact, that is Kisamjanga and Barbaiga, less so probably to Burediga and West Datoga. Um, and this is probably also where the um, Iraq uh, contact is uh, most uh, strongest um, felt in the uh, Eastern Datoga dialects. Um, after all, there is a final indicator which captures the ethnic and linguistic intertwining of Iraq and Datoga in a very nice way. And this is what I want to close with. Uh, that is um, alter alternative self-designations which are based on xenonyms. Um, so the Datoga, or on the Datoga side, there is the ethnonym Ayakoda which is an alternative name for the Gisamjanga Datoga. And this name is reported to have been adopted from Iraq into Datoga as an indigenized xenonym. Etymologically, it seems to be a blend of the Iraq word Aya, neighborhood, plus the Datoga word Ho, home, to which the Datoga singular specif specifier Da, has been attached. And vice versa, the Iraq term Negit or Amanegit or Amanegide as an alternative Iraq name for Iraq themselves incorporates an adopted xenonym, the Datoga designation Naegida for Iraq people. So this type of mutual onomastic uh, crossing uh, seems to nicely capture the specifically close bond between Iraq on the one side and Gisamjanga Datoga on the other side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roland, for this really interesting presentation. I've seen a lot of interesting data. Uh, with that, we can start the question and answer section. Uh, the question and answer section will be open to voice questions as well as written ones. If you would like to ask a question, just raise your hands in the nonverbal controls underneath the participant panel, and I will send a request to unmute. If you prefer to ask a written question that's also still possible, you can do so using the chat module, and I will read out the question. Please remember that the webinars are being recorded, so that if you ask a question, this will be part of the recording and will be released on the YouTube channel. I think I already saw a comment from Bonnie in the chat who says that she's documented a soda word in Datoga, like the one you have before for Isim Jake. Okay. Ah, thank you. Now I have it. Thank you very much. 
sold our words. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And for a moment, I don't see any raised hands, so we can get it. Ah, there you are. Uh, I think I was first, so we'll ask him to unmute. Well, uh, thank you, Roland. Let me also tell you, Anna, that Mariko was raising his hand physically. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, sorry, I can I, see. I, I will go next. <laughs> yeah, but I do. I, I, of course, I do have a first praise. I love this. I love this presentation. Um, I was wondering about a few things. Um, this uh, in, yeah, fascinated by this idea of fake, that that tokenization with the final T. Yeah, and I also would be with the high tone, maybe. Mm hmm. And uh, that the high, but, you mean the high tone is uh, installed uh, from the Iraq? It's yeah, not the Iraq have, yeah. They, they, they generalize the high tone for these, uh, for these transfers from the toga, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, but, but for the, the Kirk going to the, uh, yeah, uh, the other option would, of course, be a different uh, um, gender suffix that you say, okay, that's not present there. In the present day, uh, the Toga languages that they require in contact with, um, and yeah, technically, oh, well, no, not technically. Well, it, it would be possible to assume that in another version of the Toga earlier or a different one, there would be that that kind of form. Mm. Um, so, are there? Additional indications that you can say that is that you still want to um, stay with this the tokenization. Um, for example, I mean, would it always go to uh, to te? Uh, you mean in Iraq? Yeah. Or... I'm trying uh, to. The, mm, well. I just came across it, so I don't have so many examples. It's it's the mm -hmm. two, maybe maybe a third one, um, and I don't know how systematic that is. But of course, you're right that uh, this might point to uh, a word, a former singular form, which has been lost in the modern varieties of Datoga. But I thought it uh, at least I have evidence for alternative or well the lack the the <laughs> negative evidence let's yeah. put it like yeah. that negative evidence for uh, at least uh, gisam janga one of the eastern varieties and one of the western varieties in those cases uh, which i actually tested for the um, corresponding singulars or uh, forms with d but uh, they had been um, rejected. Um, so, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but of course, that's not a counter argument. It's always difficult to yeah. uh, prove absence, or it's yeah. uh, uh, one should check this uh, on a more broader scale, of course. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep my, my other remarks for later in the discussion. Okay. I should go to which slide now? Yeah, I think that might be the one that Donnie is asking for in the okay. chats. Yeah. I think then I will um, go to Mariko and ask him to unmute. He was first. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah, my 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 issue is a uh, it's a very good presentation because uh, I'm looking on uh, Swahili borrowings on how they are incorporated in Datoga, and uh, one thing I'm looking at is the pluralization technique. And with pluralization, I see especially I saw the name Sheroda, the honey harvesting bug. I don't know how they they make it plural. I saw it uh, as a borrowing from uh, by the Iraq. So how do how do they make it in plural? Well, because in the Toga you have Sherutka, and uh, mm -hmm. the essence of, I'm saying Sherutka is that 
it seems the poor formatives, if I may call them so, they they are not uh, they are accommodated uh, they are not accommodated in the in the when they are borrowed. So morphologically, these formatives when they become in Puro, they are not accommodated in the other languages. They remain a feature of the Datoga of mm -hmm. the Datoga vocabulary. And that's that's the case again that I went to the word that uh, was a bit problematic. That is hunt. That is lakat and uh, target. Mm -hmm. Now this word here, a hunting game, uh, in Datoga it has a plural, which takes a formative, which, are, which I believe uh, they are of Datoga origin, which is Shage Dojika. They take the OG form. So this OG form is originally Datoga. So uh, on, a, on a very simple perspective, I can argue it that way that uh, this, this word might be originally Datoga because of having a, a plural formative as well as a singular formative. And again, last week I can give out uh, what I have on personal names. We had Ngadi coming mm -hmm. from Lyon. Mm -hmm. I saw a Datoga name missing. We have Gita Ngadi. So there is a such mm -hmm. a name in that. Yeah. So those are the comments that I had concerning the, the plural formatives, how they are complicated okay. and yes. how they are. Thank you very much. Missing. Yeah, these are actually three questions I uh, recognize um, and I try to keep track of them. So um, the observation or my observation is that the Datoga plurals are not borrowed. It's the singulars. And then in Iraku, you will uh, an, an Iraq plural will be formed on the basis of that uh, borrowed singular with uh, Iraq material. Uh, so there are some plural suffixes uh, which are very productive in Iraq, uh, which would be applied to, uh, was it a Sherod? Is, uh, I've, I've just looked it up. It's uh, Sherod Ma. Um, and uh, another suffix which is frequently applied is uh, in uh, Du uh, or Adu, uh, which would be applied to those um, um, those borrowings, but uh, mm, I have not rec I have not systematically checked this. Mm, so uh, the observation is that it's not the the Tatoga plural suffixes which are borrowed along. No. Yeah. And um, about Chaget, the the hon Hontia is. Uh, somewhere on the next slide probably yeah um yeah this is a difficult um issue because uh, i think the argument that you bring uh, is not very conclusive in that uh, respect because the example that you have that you bring is another derivation from uh, from shageta which is uh, hunter i think a noun uh, an agent noun that you bring it's uh, it's derived from uh, shage from that from the root which is in shageta but uh, in order to determine the the um the source one would have to take into account that there is a southern nilotic reconstruction. So there's a southern nilotic etymology to it. And uh, on the Cushitic side, there is an uh, there seems to be a cognate in Yaku, and the the etymology in West Drift is also quite robust. There's a reconstruction for that. So this must be um, very ancient, actually. And uh, it's it's not a matter probably of um, borrowing between Iraq and Datoga, but something which must have occurred before in the history. That's what uh, seems to be the case. And what was the final one? You mentioned Ngadida somehow, yeah. but I don't remember the, your point here. Was uh, there was uh, the personal names? Yes. The there was a uh, Datoga name missing that and I said ah, that okay. there is a yeah. uh, the Datoga yes yeah that is a, a good observation so uh, and something which I also wanted to bring out here 
that the Datoga uh, words have been used as a base for forming Iraq names without uh, Datoga uh, name models for it. So it's uh, the case that Datoga names are also derived from Datoga words, of course, but Nadida obviously does not serve as a as a base for deriving a Datoga name, isn't it? Is that the point that you want to make? Uh, the point is that there is a name from uh, that derives from Gadida, that is Gidangadi. Ah, okay, yes, good, thank you. But in that case, it would be uh, definitely it could be identified by the prefix or the yeah. the uh, the gida um, before yes yeah. thank you yeah good and Bonnie is... mm -hmm. oh, sorry yes please i should move to some slide but i don't know which i think it's the the one that you were on before um just the one with uh, all the question marks so yeah, there you go. And then I shall proceed to give the turn to Amani Lusukelo, who's been uh, raising his hand for a while. Thank you, Anne. Mm, I have, uh, I was looking on the name Barihe. Barihe. The name? Yes. Yeah. Barihe, which mm -hmm. is a person name. And the, uh, the other time we had a list of 1,126 uh, uh, names from uh, Hanang, which I assume is it more of a uh, Barbaiga uh, uh, homeland. So I, I picked four primary schools in the typical Datoga villages. And uh, I have uh, undergraduate students in the University of Dar es Salaam who I want them to identify uh, the Toga names uh, with the purpose of seeing how they um, they maintain their language and in the naming system. Mm -hmm. And Barihe, maybe I should uh, uh, spell it B-A-R-I-H-E. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think Kuria is saying it is the Toga, but Alphonse, uh, uh, Crispin Alphonse is saying it's Iraq. So, so I'm confused in between. And the evidence, when you are putting out the evidence, whether it is the Togo or Iraq, uh, I missed it. Uh, uh, shall I go uh, back? Uh, if you can remember, you can recall it, yeah, uh, uh, I'll be very grateful. Uh, and on the uh, list of verbs from Iraq verbs, I was wondering whether you had uh, tested, you know, when we were struggling with the borrowed words and how they accommodate the motion, the affix suffixes for motion events, uh, especially the associated locomotion. <laughs> Have you tested any and see how they are operating within Datoga? If you know that this is a verb from Iraq and it uh, is borrowed into Datoga and how oh, okay. do they, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. That's what I was eager to hear. Uh, you are asking just to pick the the last question. Now you are asking for um, verbs borrowed from Iraq into Datoga and whether they um, could be recruited or could be used to apply the associated locomotion to it. Yes. Is that the question? Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't seen a, any case of that because it's very uh well one mm, what is it's it's very rare to find uh verbs to be borrowed uh generally and then words from iraq into datoga it was hard to find any verbs at all which are borrowings and uh, the only verbs i've found uh, borrowed verbs in datoga are from uh, Swahili. Um, and with those, I have tested um, applicability of the associated locomotions. So in order to prove that it's actually productive, and they are. So Soma, for example, to read would be um, so mad and uh, so, was it, was it so man to read while moving somewhere? So uh, if, if that's your, the target of your question, Armani. 
and uh, for uh, the other uh, thank you also for pointing out uh, your research on the was it the the names and the place names uh well bari um yeah it's uh, the, the the point i wanted to make here you see it on the on the slide you have the name here which has the Iraq from Barhe, which is from Barie, uh, where the eight uh, could have been, could be retained. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's retained in uh, modern days or whether the tendency is to reduce it actually to Barie without the T or to Barhe actually. Uh, but in uh, the burger material, you get Barie, Barie. And this is clearly from um, the corresponding uh, Datoga name Bergeda, which is derived from that, uh, well, normal Datoga noun. And I see that Andrew posts uh, evidence which confirms this from the Gorwa side, Bariyed, with a D in the end. Thank you very much. I do. Uh, I I hope I have addressed all the issues that you raised, Aman. Thank you. I was just eager to keep, to check whether the the toga verb, uh, verbs from Iraq uh, 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 are used in the uh, yeah marking of us associated motion. Haven't found anything, but um, maybe one could uh, test for it in setting up an experiment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then I think next was Andrew Harvey. I mean, where do I start? There's so much here. It's a fantastic presentation. Thank you, Roland. I just have a, a couple quick thoughts and, uh, and, and sort of ideas that I'll pass on to you quickly. Yeah, the coinage of names uh, derived from common nouns in Datoga, I think is really interesting. I, I've, I've sat down with our colleague, uh, Herman Malayek here in Haidom uh, for maybe the past couple of weeks, and we went over some names uh, in uh, his variety of Datoga. And I found it interesting that a lot of the, the Gorwa names that are people's common names uh, that are clearly derived from Datoga, I haven't seen any yet that are Ginyawakshoda terms in Datoga. And part of me wondered, well, why aren't these Ginyawakshoda names being borrowed into Gorwa personal names. So Gingawaksho is the, is, the, is the avoidance term. And it made me think, well, maybe, maybe it's the fact that the Gorwa speakers at the point where they were adopting Datoga names actually understood that these terms were Gingawakshoda names. So when they would hear somebody's name, they would say, well, this is a Gingawakshoda name, and I'm not going to borrow the Gingawakshoda term, I'll borrow the actual term that's used. Mm -hmm. So it started me thinking, you know, why are, you know, we have a lot of personal names in Gorwa that are borrowed from Datoga, but why aren't any of them Gingawakshoda? Mm -hmm. So is that, a, is that, does that point to a larger sort of cultural understanding going on there, or just mm -hmm. widespread multilingualism? Mm -hmm. You know, and not even, not even simply just sort of the, the low level language, but, but sort of these cultural registers as well. That's just that's just one sort of thought that I had in my head. Thank um, you. I'm, I'm not in Dongobesh right now. I'm a few hours away from Dongobesh. And um, it's sort of exciting that, that, that this Dongo part or this Dongo uh, part uh, hasn't been analyzed uh, as uh, Datoga. And um, I've been working with Hadza speakers uh, this week and um, the word uh, dongo bay is um, is zebras in uh, Hadza. Mm -hmm. So it's a group of it would be a group of female zebras. So I mean it sort of it sort of um, matches this passage, this open passage maybe for zebras. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the last little note I'll um, give you here is um, that in Gorwa they have the same trickster story. But they don't call him. They don't call him um, Lach. They call uh, him Lai, 
And mm -hmm. I always wondered, I said, well, why, why is it lie here, this trickster character? It's not Lotch. And that's sort of a that's sort of a difference. I've never been able to find a Lotch story, but it's lie and it's the same character. And um Oliver Stegen uh, a few years ago now said, you know, they have this character lie in Rangi stories as well. Um but then when you go to Sandawe, there's uh, there's no uh, there's no lie trickster character, but actually the word for hair is lae. So the idea that lie and lae are the trickster character, of course. So that's that's the last that's the last uh, little comment I'll I'll give. But yeah, fantastic presentation. Thank you so much, Roland. Thank you, Andrew, for for this uh, last remark. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, lie is also there. And uh, just to add uh, one other um, mm, well observation on top of th this is that uh, you mentioned Sandawi, where lae uh, is the hair, um, and in Burungi and Andalagua you get uh, the the same or well um, mm, comparable plot or mm, character. Uh, who a figure uh, who acts in a story with a similar plot, and uh, he, that character is called Laai. There are lots of remarks in the chat, and I don't know how to save them. Um, I will save them for you. Uh, <laughs> I can send them to you afterwards. Thank I you. think on that note, um, I see indeed a lot of comments on the naming. So. When it comes to the names, um, Chris, uh, Richard Christian also replied that he worked with a man named uh, Bodygate, but that has another lexical item in addition, donkey. Uh, Crispina Alphonse says that Iraku has both uh, Barhe and Barriet oh, yeah. names. Um, then Richard says Dongo is singular, so possibly Dongo plus Bash. And then Marta responds to um, also the names like Haida Reer, the magical bull, is claimed to be the name of the valley where it resides, according to my storytellers. And he remarks that in Nordpustat's version of Lach, uh, he is actually a hare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there seems to be something going on. There, there are two competing etymologies now with uh, Lach and Lai or Lai. Um, yeah, interesting. And uh, was it uh, Barra? I can't find it any longer. What was it? Bar ah, yeah, here, yeah. Bardigate. Yeah, it's something like uh, beating the 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 donkey or killing the donkey. Okay, thank you very much for all these remarks. Then I see that Bonnie Sands has uh, raised her hands. Hi, I just wanted to point out that I have a source for the lovebird parrot word for you. Okay. From my uh, uh, documentation. And I have the wor a word delanta, meaning liquid honey, which sounds a lot like that lanta, sun or god word and liquid honey. Oh, okay, okay. A bit of a religious experience and certainly. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just wondering if anyone has any... Uh, <laughs> idea that you know i mean honey is like a liquid it is a sunshiny color it's a golden yeah, could yeah. there be some connection there i don't know enough about the morphology to know what that initial mm. duh might be but yeah yeah well da could be something like uh, the uda prefix in datoga which gets reduced uh, to different extent uh, uda, da, or even ulla, uh, the D undergoes assimilation, but, uh, well, I don't know if this might be far-fetched, but let's check. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Well, thank you very much for the fantastic talk. <laughs> <laughs> then I see another comment in the chat from Esbrookhaus, uh, that uh, Dunyo Beige is a type of grass. Mm. So we have lots of um, proposals for etymologies yet to decide. Ah, I see that uh, Amani Ruskedo raised his hand. Uh, no, no, uh, Roland. Yes. Uh, what what uh, 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 Stefan is saying is this is, is a co combined word. So we have Dungo, Dungo. And it, besh, 
Yeah, which is, uh, what is it, elephant or, uh, is it beige or be beige? Be beige, yeah. And that's what I wanted to point out. Uh, yeah, thank you. Time, had, had, yeah, yeah. That it's a compound, yes. It's a, com it's a compound. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So it's a combination of two. Now, how do you re uh, judge for the etymology? Do you take the two as a single word or do you think of dong? dong well, uh, well, I don't know. I would have. Um, we have several competing uh, proposals uh, now, and also Richard points our attention to the fact that it's uh, important to pay attention to the quality of that uh, vowel here. It's uh, whether it's beige or beige, but probably uh, Stefan means beige because otherwise he would have written what uh, Richard uh, writes here. Um, beige, um, yeah, I, I, it, it's possible, but uh, I don't know. I could be. Uh, I don't know about the other etymologies which have been proposed from the, was it the Hadza side? Uh, yeah. Okay. I can't tell. Yeah, Dongo is, Dongo is zebra. And yeah. Dongo is zebra also in Burungi. I see a lot more comments coming up. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Mariko says a black blind elephant. Dungwa Beshta. In Hatsa literature, Bonnie says the donkey and zebra switched skin. Yeah, so it's uh, very difficult, I think, because we uh, get into that realm where we have to critically review these competing etymologies and to um, kind of sort them out for. <laughs> uh probability uh, because uh it's also quite notorious that you have you get some folk etymologies um here but i wouldn't be i wouldn't dare to 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 sort this out now much thank you for all your remarks and suggestions uh, thank you i think those are all the questions and comments for today i'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the rift valley webinar series can be found on the rift valley network youtube page and entries for each presentation are added to the rift valley bibliography looking ahead the next webinar will be on wednesday the 19th of may which will be presented by sam Walbeer, and it's titled disciplining the archive african history john m weatherby so data and language archives I would like to thank Roland again for his presentation and of course everyone else for participating today and I hope to see you again at our next webinar.